All right, hey, well, welcome back. This is Pastor Joe from Community Alliance Church. Thank you for joining us here in this deeper dive. And this past Sunday, we finished up our All of Us series, and the big idea for the day was this. Discipleship requires relationship. Relationships are a key part of growing in our faith in Christ. Now, one of the things I wasn't able to talk about in the sermon, but I wanted to share with you is just how much Jesus spent investing in his disciples, not just in growing their faith, but in growing their relationships with each other. And I think it provides us a really good model for understanding how he viewed discipleship, as well as how we can work to grow our relationships with others to grow our faith in Christ. When people look at Jesus's ministry, they often see the miracles that he did, um, the way that he treated outsiders, the theological things that he taught his disciples, even revealing his identity. But when we go back and look at his discipleship of his disciples through the lens of discipleship requiring relationship, we can see that by the time he left his disciples after three years of ministry with them, when he left them alone to accomplish the Great Commission, he had not only prepared them to understand who he was and the message of Jesus that they would be sharing with others, he had prepared them to be in strong relationship with each other because we see that accomplishing all that Jesus has given us to do requires all of us. So I want to take a quick walk back through some of the ways that Jesus discipled his disciples in relationship. And he showed us many different ways that we can take what he did and apply it to our lives. One of the big ways that they, he discipled them was just shared travel. They lived in an ancient Middle Eastern world with no cars, and they often walked everywhere that they went. They took road trips together. In fact, Luke chapter 8, verse 1 says, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. And here's the key thing. The 12 were with him. They had many conversations just walking along the road. It provided many teaching opportunities for Jesus. It provided the disciples many opportunities, not just to talk about big things like theology and, and Jesus and God, but to talk about their lives, their families, who they were, what it was like growing up to get to know one another on a very, very personal level. Speaking of that, not only did they travel together, his disciples often shared meals together. They had to eat everywhere they went at least several times a day. And so that often around food, they built relationships with one another. One of the most famous ones is at the Passover meal when Jesus says in Luke chapter 22, the hour comes and Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And Jesus tells them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. It was that special time of relationship around shared food where they were bonding and growing their relationships with one another. Another way that Jesus discipled them in relationship was by giving them work to do together, by giving them things to accomplish tangibly side by side for his kingdom. One great example is whenever Jesus was about to feed the 5,000, we know the story about how Jesus took a few loaves of fish or a few loaves and a few fish and multiplied it to feed many, many people. But did you ever notice that when Jesus did it, he directed the people to sit down and Matthew chapter 14 tells us, took the loaves and the two fish, gave thanks and broke them. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to people. He said, here, you do this work side by side and it helped them to grow in the relationship with one another because they learned to work together. Not only that, they ministered together. They saw other people through the lens of Jesus as they did ministry side by side. In Mark chapter 6, Jesus called his 12. He began to send them out two by two and then gave them impure authority over impure spirits. One great way that we can build relationships with one another within our discipleship is by serving Jesus alongside one another. I had a friend who recently became one of our Frontlines team members, and he was sharing with me recently when we were talking. He said, you know, when you asked me to do this, I thought I was just going to be greeting people on Sunday morning and helping make them feel comfortable. But what he found is that now every Sunday morning, he is getting to know the other people that he serves with. He's coming to see them as much as he's coming to serve other people because of that relationship that's building. Jesus gives us another great example of a way that we can build relationships with one another. In John chapter 13, Jesus says to his disciples, Now that I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set an example that you should do as I have done for you. Washing someone's feet was, was sort of an intimate act. It required kneeling before them, making oneself vulnerable to the other person. One of the ways that we can grow our relationships and our discipleship is by becoming vulnerable to one another. By taking off our masks, the things that we put on to, prevent, to pretend that we are greater than what we are, and allowing others to see the real us. Becoming vulnerable and serving. Becoming vulnerable and opening up and saying, I'm giving you power over me because I want you to know that I trust you. 
and sharing our lives with one another. A couple more examples was not just being coming vulnerable, but by going through hard things together. After Jesus died, John chapter 20 tells us that the first evening of, on the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Why were these disciples all together? Well, they thought that Jesus had died. They thought that they had lost their master, and on top of that, they were afraid. The people who had killed Jesus, they thought, well, they might be coming for us too. They were going through what a friend of mine calls shared adversity. They were facing difficulty together. I remember a number of years ago, an older gentleman that I was friends with shared with me that he and his company that he served with in Korea had been through many hard things on the battlefield. And every year, that group of men, that group of soldiers and veterans would get back together to reconnect. It was a group of people that had gone through an adversity that no one else could understand except for those that would get together in that room. And we need people in our lives that can understand the difficult things that we go through and to go through them with us, to build that relationship, not just around the celebrations, but around the difficulties and the challenges. Let me give you two more. Another one is shared secrets. If you remember when Jesus went up on the mount uh, to, to be transfigured and Elijah and Moses appeared, he took Peter, James, and John with him. And as they're coming back down from this amazing experience, Jesus tells them, don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. He gave them a secret to keep amongst the three of them. Shared secrets can build relationships with one another. Now, I'm not talking about secrets that hide evil or secrets that prevent justice from being served. But I'm talking about having a place where we can share the secrets of our lives, the burdens that we carry, the things that we need to talk about bringing to light some of the darkness and knowing that there are people who can carry that secret and keep it from being used to destroy us and instead being used to free us. Sharing secrets, sharing who we truly are, is one of the great ways to build relationships. Finally, let me give you one last one that Jesus did with his disciples. If you read the stories of disciples, you know that often, together, they messed up, they failed, they made mistakes. In one instance, they were trying to drive a demon out of someone and they just weren't able to do it. So the man whose son who had the demon came to Jesus and said, I begged your disciples to drive it out, but they could not. Jesus kind of gets a little upset at the disciples and, and says something that seems a little bit harsh. He says, you unbelieving and perverse generation, how long shall I stay and put up with you? Bring your son to me. In other words, he, he kind of gave the disciples a hard time for failing. And as they stood around, and they realized that they had messed up together, I believe that Jesus even knew that, that that shared failure was bonding them together. My grandfather, who's no longer living, uh, once told me a story. I lived with him and my grandma for a season of my life, and uh, my grandfather and my grandmother had seven sons and daughters. And he told me about a time whenever my aunts and my uncles were little and, and they were all downstairs in the basement and something had gotten broken. And he went down and a group of the children were all together. And he asked them, who did this? And uh, he told me that no one would tell on each other. They all had each other's back and wouldn't share. They had all gotten into trouble together. And I remember him sharing just how proud he was of his children. That even though that there was a problem, even though something had gone wrong, that they shared in it together. Then I asked my grandfather what he did. He said, well, I spanked all of them to make sure I got the right one. I guess that's how things worked in the 60s. But remembering that, that they were all in it together, that even when things went wrong, they shared it. They bore that burden together. It was a way that their, their relationships were formed. There are many ways that we can apply this to our lives. Relationships with one another are more than just coming to church and sitting side by side and singing the same songs and hearing the same sermon. What the church is, is a body of people, a gathering that exists not just for an hour on Sunday morning, but a gathering that shares in life together all week long, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, being available to one another, being available to listen, to share, and to relate, and to grow. All right, I hope this helps you understand a little bit more about how Jesus discipled his disciples. And more than that, I hope that it helps us understand how Jesus wants us to grow in relationships with each other as we grow as his disciples serving his kingdom. Thank you so much. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you.